I'm going to give honor to God who's the head of my life. I'm going to give Apostle, thank you for the opportunity just to be amongst the people. It's a great thing when people entrust you to bring the word. Amen. To speak to his people. God bless you. And, um, I'll never forget to give honor to my husband. Amen. 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 So for my husband, my husband, my personal project. <laughs> I just wanted to play a song that's been in my spirit all week and it's kept me through the whole week. Yeah. And I just wanted um, someone else to just be able to hear. Amen. Make sure it's the right word. Satan. 
and we're going to skip all the way down to verse 20. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree wither from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Uh -huh. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to you this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, uh -huh. and does not doubt in their heart, but believe that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, mm -hmm. believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Oh, yeah. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, yes. so that your Father in heaven may forgive you Boy. your sins. They arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests and teachers of the law and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked. And who gave you authority to do this, Jesus replied. I will ask you one question, answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask. Then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, they feared the, t the people from everyone held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Wow. Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing those things. Amen? Amen. So, Normally, when you give me notes, you just take them away, but I have to give you a couple of definitions before yeah. we even get started. Yeah. And the topic today is going to be, by whose authority are you operating under? Yeah. And the first definition is profit. And we're going to, one, uh, one who communicates or interprets messages from God, a prophet is a person authorized to speak from God. Uh -huh. Visions, oracles, or burdens, but most often it was identified as the word of the Lord. Yeah. The responsibility, the role of the prophet, served as contemporary voice of God to his generation. As the voice of God, the prophet pointed out religion and social sins and called for repentance. Yeah. But the prophet was a source of specific divine guidance. Huh? Prophets yeah. confirmed and counseled kings and even defeated battles. Right. The second word is authority, power, influence. Webster defines authority, the power or right to give orders, make decisions, and enforce obedience. Uh -huh. So, the word, again, by whose authority are you? As we read in the word about Jesus, we know before Jesus ascended, before he went through his crucifixion, before he rose with all power in his hand, before he ascended into heaven, he said he would leave with us a comforter. Yes. And when Jesus said he would leave us a comforter, that comforter being the Holy Spirit, which is our guidance, who instructs, who show us the things that we're supposed to be doing in his word. He corrects us. He shows us which direction we're going. Mm -hmm. All of these things. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is the ultimate authority mm -hmm. on the earth, why is it for us to obey the authority that Jesus gives to his people? Mm -hmm. God has prophets that he placed in position uh -huh. for different roles and for different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. God has leaders that he placed in positions for different things, for different roles. We have different situations, but it all boils down to the same God. Yeah, if yeah. we're serving the same yeah. God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So as we get even more into the lesson, we put my glasses on, you know, um, I want to give my testimony. Uh -huh. All week, I've been suffering with sinuses and allergies because this is allergy season, and I suffer mm -hmm. with seasonal allergies and all year round allergies, so I'm supposed to take medication all the time, mm -hmm. just to kind of keep things at bay. See, but I have enough faith to believe 
that God is going to carry me through the next day. Yes. I have enough faith to believe that I'm going to make it through, that he's going to sustain me even through the stuff that I continue to go through. Yes. So one of the biggest things that I suffer with is headaches when the allergy yes. season come on. And everyone knows, thank you, Lord. See, I told you he changes the lesson, <laughs> that as you receive those headaches, it affects the way you think. Yes. It affects the way you respond. It affects the way that you move. It affects everything about your being. Yes. Because if the head is out of order, Michael. then everything else is out of order. That's so right. when the head comes under attack, when we're going through these thoughts, when we're going through the process, when we're going through the press, and when we're going through the pruning, sometimes when we're being pressed, uh -huh. that's a crucial place to be in. Yes, so, it is. And yes, it hurts. It is. I heard. Call it pressure place. Okay, but if we know that Jesus is the ultimate authority here on earth, and he's told us all we have to do is believe and have faith, why is it so hard for us to believe in the God we say we serve? Right, right. See, everything, the Bible said everything is subject unto God. Uh -huh. Everything. That means everything on this earth yeah. is subject unto Christ. So when God gives permission for certain people to go in and do certain things, why is it hard to receive when that person come in when God is saying, I sent them. Uh -huh. I gave the instructions. Uh -huh. I gave the call. I laid everything out. Why is it hard for us to receive? Yeah. Oh, here, no faith. My Lord. Where's our faith? My Lord. We say we believe in this God who showed us miracles, signs, and wonders. We say we believe in this God who we read about that brought his people out of Egypt, and we yeah. hear about the miracles and the yeah. signs and the parting of the sea and all the plagues and things he brought upon the Pharaoh just so his people can release. Yes. He's given us everything in this book. Yes. Everything. Amen. Everything. Every. There is nothing that's, that's going on in this world that God has not given us instructions in the book on how to overcome. Amen. Amen. What the word say, we are overcome by what? The blood of the Lamb. That's right, all right. And the word of our testimony. Yeah. That's right. Good. So why is it hard for us to testify about the grace of Jesus? Yeah. What, why is it hard for us to testify about how God brought us through? That's right. Why is it hard for us to testify about the things that God has done because we know we were in that low place? Yeah. How many of us have storms in our life that we are afraid to speak to? My God. Fear and faith don't reside in that place. Amen. Amen. Right. Testimony on the spot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta yeah. clean it up. That's all good. <laughs> we gotta yeah. clean it up. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 I have a phobia. And the phobia are I don't like bugs and I don't like snakes. Amen. And we're gonna go to the lesson on that part because God gave me yeah. something specific for that. Yeah. And Prophet, you didn't know that that was part of the lesson for today. Praise the Lord. See, sometimes we miss the enemy because we're looking for one thing. But it comes through another thing. Mm -hmm. While I was cooking on the grill yesterday, <laughs> I had the back door open. And we stay in Emporia, and it's really literally a swamp area. And where we stay, it floods in our yard so bad. You can have all of this beautiful property. But when the wind comes and the storm comes and the water comes, you'll realize just where you're living in. <laughs> oh. Because when you step outside, you're going to step on a puddle. So my biggest fear has always been coming home and seeing a snake uh -huh. laying on my porch oh my or God. laying on my back door. Uh -huh. Because keep in mind, we stay in the swamp area. So while I had the back door open cooking on the grill, what he didn't mention was it had got dark and we have like this big light that shines on the back. But just so happened this night, the light is going down because the light about to blow out. So I'm uh -huh. outside cooking on the grill and I can't see so I'm having to stand to the side to get the food going. And when I stand to the side, I notice that the screen door is open. And I'm like, why is the door, why the door keep coming open? So I shut the door. So I'm looking for a snake that may crawl in the dark, lurking, and go into the house. But I missed the enemy that was coming in, which was the spider. <laughs> See, and that's where we're going. We are so busy looking for the enemy to come one way. One way. Uh -huh. But when we miss the way that he come in, uh -huh. and we're going to go there. We know he comes another way. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for a snake that may be lurking at the door, but it wasn't a snake. Mm -hmm. It was a huge, that's what he didn't mention either. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. The spider was this big. Seriously. When I looked, turned on the light in the kitchen, 
And I went to go to the kitchen sink. Uh -huh. And when I got to the kitchen sink, my spirit said, look, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And this battle was so big, he literally was taking up that much of the sink that I saw his legs sticking out as I got closer. Mm -hmm. And yes, I screamed. Yeah, and he came running in there thinking that something seriously was wrong with that, you know, the way I was screaming. Because I didn't want to move, listen at this, because I wanted to keep my eye on the spider that was in the sink. Mm -hmm. See, some of us are moving out of position too soon, and we miss what's right in front of us because we're looking for it to come another way. The reason we keep getting trapped, the reason we keep getting caught up, the reason why we keep going through some of the test trials and tribulations and not passing the test is because we got our eye on the wrong thing. Oh, See, we oh, got to oh. keep our eye on Jesus. That's right. As right. long as we keep our eye on Jesus, he said, keep your eye on him. Yeah. Don't look to the left, don't uh, look to the right, uh, don't look to the side, Amen. don't focus it's on it's what's it. on the ground, don't focus what's behind you. Focus on Jesus. Yes. That's right. And staying on it. Yeah. Stay in it. Yeah. And staying on it. Faith. I'm Amen. telling you, faith without works is dead. Stay in there, don't move. And as God gives you instructions to do what it is that you need to do, as God gives you the authority yeah. to do yeah. what you're doing, and you're staying focused, you can Where keep your eye on him. See, had my eye been on Jesus, uh -huh, uh -huh. the enemy that was right in front of me, guess what? Mm -hmm. I would have already known he was there. Yeah. You know why? Because the Bible tells me that God, that, that nothing come on me unaware. Mm -hmm. He has nothing come on me yeah. unaware. So there is nothing that the enemy can do that God won't equip me for. Yes. Because if the enemy's coming, yes. God has already prepared me to be able to get through what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. See, but the problem is, when I begin to take my eye uh -huh. off that spot yeah. and begin to back up, yeah. and I say, Lord, please don't let him move. Uh -huh. And he moved, and he jumped. Uh -huh. I promise you I'm going out this front door. Uh -huh. I'm going to leave everything here. Yeah. And that's the problem with us. Woo! When we get focused on the wrong thing yes. and lose track of who Jesus is, That's right. and we go running away when right. God said run to, we want right. to run this way, and God said, no, I need you to run to him. But Woo. we want to run back the other way because we know this way, we're familiar with this, right. and they're comfortable here. God said, no, I'm taking you into new territory. As I prepare you to go into this new territory, i got to move some things out of the way, but you got to stay focused. Come on. How many of us, our minds, goes all over the place. Mm -hmm. I'm a thinker. Yeah, and yeah, as a thinker, yeah, 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 yeah. my mind sometimes will talk me out of things that I know God told me to do. Yeah, yeah. But because I'm a thinker, uh -huh. and because I'm in my own head, did uh -huh. you hear that part? Because uh -huh. I'm in my own head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I haven't allowed Jesus, mm -hmm. who's the governor authority on this earth, to step in and do the perfect thing inside of me, but he gave me a responsibility. Yeah. My sole responsibility is to renew my mind daily. How many of us are caught up in the yes. trap, yes. in the circle of repetitiveness, because yes. we're not doing the work? My God. How many? How many? How long are we going to stay in the conditions that we're in? Yeah. When God said, just like he told the children of Israel, they were standing there, standing there, whooping and complaining, going back in circles, circles, circles over again. God said, wait a minute. You've been in this place long enough. It's time to go. It's time to move. How long are we going to stay stagnated? Yeah, that's right. How long are we going to stay still? Again, when you focus back on that side, I was afraid. Did you hear that part? Fear. How many of us are whole held bondage and captive to fear? Amen. If God said it, He's the ultimate source, the ultimate authority that governs the earth. And he's given us the way that we're supposed to live. Uh -huh. He's given us the way we're supposed to treat each other. Mm -hmm. He's given us the instructions on how we're supposed to forgive and love each other. Amen. Speak it. Where is our faith? Speak it. Whose authority are you operating in? Preach Whose authority preach. are you operating under? Preach it. And God gave many examples of his authority. See, the thing is, when I go to some of these services, people down on the ground, they got to do all this. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> but if you read the examples in the book, where do you see Jesus going down on the ground and struggling and fighting and doing all that? Jesus spoke. Spoke the word. It was. And they obeyed him. Amen. And there were times that Jesus will Amen. touch and they were healed. Mm -hmm. But he didn't touch everybody. But the words say every demon was subject unto him. There were demons that tried to speak before the appointed time to expose who they thought he, they knew who Jesus was. They uh -huh. knew who he was. Yeah. 
they knew who was the governor authority. And if they wanted to speak to tell the people who Jesus was, but Jesus said, no, the time is not yet. You don't have that authority to speak. So Jesus made them shut down and shut up. How many of us are speaking out of turn? How many of us are operating under the anointing and the gift of the devil? What anointing, what gift? Uh, exactly my point. Uh, because the anointing and the gift of is done by God. Amen. So we need to ask ourselves, what authority are we allowing in our life that's causing us to continuously go back into sin? Yeah. We need to ask ourselves, at what point are we going to stand up and do what we're supposed to do Come on. the way that we're supposed to do it? When are we going to continue to walk that straight, that path called straight, yeah. and not walk that crooked path that keeps us from falling over and over and over again? Wow. As we go to the fig tree. Yes. Jesus cursed it. You know why he cursed it? Because he, it was no more useful. It, it wasn't producing anything. Amen. It was just something sitting there taking up space. How many people sit in a church Sunday after Sunday, year after year, day after day? There's no change. You're just like that fig tree. Amen. You're just sitting and you're withering away. You're withering away. You're withering away. There's no anointing. There's no power. There's no authority. No governing authority because you ain't listening to nobody. Amen. True. When Jesus said he is the governing authority, guess what? He's talking to us, the right. church. That's right. He's talking to the world, but he's talking to us, the church, because he gives a certain set of instructions That's right. that we have to follow as we serve him. Amen. We can't continue to be in the world uh -huh. and doing the same things of the world, oh and there's no difference between us and them. That's say why it. there's a great separation. Say it. Say it. When you see some of the churches on the TVs, they done brought the world into the church Amen. instead of taking the church into the world. Smile. See, when you get Jesus, he bring about change. Hey, There's bro. a redoing inside of you. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. walk is different. Smile. Your talk is different. Smile. Your lifestyle is yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be the same. Yeah. There's going to be some change. Hey, you know, every time you when something comes your way, trouble, trials, and tribulations, you want to do this. You want to go back to the same on me. Uh -huh. You know what? I'm I was guilty of it. I'll be the first to tell you. I was guilty of it. And it wasn't until recently that God called my whole card and called me out on my mess. My you life. say you are a prophetess of mine, and I give you an instruction, so why is it hard for you to obey the instructions I give you? Mm -hmm. I told you to love my people. My God. I told you to forgive yeah. my people. Uh, I told you to shut your mouth and pass the door in your mouth, and you caused more discretion to the house than you did if you haven't just been quiet. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Silence is the golden killer, and we ain't got it yet. Uh, when Jesus was going through what he was going through, when he was being crucified on that cross, and when he was going through what he was going through, and they was beating him, the word said, what did he do? Uh, he never alone. Never said a word. Why is it when we go through trials and tribulations, and we're going through something, and it becomes painful, and it hurts so bad, uh, the first thing we want to do is say, ouch, <laughs> why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? You know what the problem is? It's too much of self in the way. You got to go back on that altar and some stuff down the mind. The problem is there ain't enough humility in the church. Everybody want to be somebody, but God said he's everything. And you can't be elevated unless God himself elevates you. Man can put you in any position that he puts you in. But until God say, elevate him, God will elevate himself. So if he's a man of God and he's under the authority of Christ Jesus, He's going to be obedient to whatever the Spirit says. Well, let me give you a keynote. Thank you, Jesus. God ain't going to tell your pastor something that he ain't already said to you. Amen. Come on. So, if my pastor says, oh, I'm a prophetess, but God said you're an evangelist, and my pastor want to put me in the position of prophetess, but God said you're an evangelist, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to deal with the consequences that come with being a prophetess. If you're operating outside of the authority that you've been given. Amen. And then we wonder why you're getting beat in so many situations because you are out of order, you are unauthorized, and you're doing what you're doing. There's too many people in the house of God, in the body of Christ, that's operating with the wrong body part. There you go. There's too many. True. And God is tired. Amen. He's sick and he's tired. Yeah. And what we see in the Bible, God when God <laughs> gets to the point that he's no. tired, that he's tired. tired, and he gets to the point he's tired, 
And then when some of the stuff started happening, when he started destroying some of the stuff, when he started bringing on the earthquakes, when he started bringing on the flood, when he started bringing on the tsunamis, when he started bringing on killing the things, when he started bringing on so much, when the hand of God comes off you. That simply means when the hand of God is removed, then you have to deal with the consequences that come with your actions. Jesus. Amen. The problem is there's not enough accountability. Mm -hmm. we got to be accountable for us. Mm -hmm. That's why the words say work out your own yes. salvation yes. with yes. fear and tremor. Yes. Yes. When are we going to start respecting God? As prophet teach, put some respect on his name. That's when right. are we going to start putting some respect on his name? That's right. When are we going to stop allowing the people who say they're not of him disrespect our father? Not when are we going to stand up and fight for what's already been established. Yeah. All we got to do is open our mouth and speak a word. That's right. All we got to do is show it in the book. True. But you know what the problem is? True. It ain't enough people in the book to show it to you. You know why? Because they ain't studying. That's they ain't right. renewing their mind. They they're know. living a life that's not God. Yeah. And they're not getting the book because we have become busybodies. We're so busy with the things of the world that we're not busy about our father's business. Amen. Mm -hmm. When are we going to get busy about the right things? My Lord, my Lord. Because the bottom line is, I don't care. Let me tell you. I don't care how much money God give you. And had it, lost it, been there, done that. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. You had the best of it. Man, Let me tell you something. I don't care how much money you have. Uh -huh. If you don't have the love of Christ in your heart. Man. If you are not walking it like you're talking. Uh -huh. If you are not living it. Yes. When you lose everything you got yes. and God brings you down to the, that humbling place yes. Yes. and you have to eat that humbling pie yes. and you have to be brought down to the very low yes. that only God can pick you up because man down there, girl, you got to get up. Let me tell you something. You're down on the ground. Girl, what's wrong with you? Get up on that floor. Get yes. up. But how many people extend that hand? My how many people reach down and say, come on, my sister. Let me yes. Yes. How yes. many people reach down and pull their sister up? Yes. God has given us the authority to do what needs to be done. Yes. But we don't want to exercise the right of the authority that God has already given. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many of us in here mm -hmm. lack faith? We say we want to be made whole. Mm -hmm. Where's your faith? Mm -hmm. You say we want the body to be healed. Where's your faith? Yes. Mm -hmm. We say that we want our mind to be yeah. better because we feel like we're about to lose our mind. Where's your renewing? Because that's your responsibility. Yes. We got to take some accountability and responsibility for us. Amen. God has already said, I'm the authority that stands here that gives you the power to do the things that's to be done. I can give you the healing that needs to be. But this thing is activated by faith. Yes, it is. But you can't go before the Father and ask God to forgive you or something and you don't like your sister. Say it again. How can the, the word say, how can you love a God uh -huh. who you can't see? Uh -huh. And then you say, you love your brother. I you heard. really don't love him. My Lord. Amen. I'm going to turn this way. Tell the truth. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Backbiting. Uh -huh. Backstabbing. Uh -huh. Come on. Scandalous. Uh -huh. Scandalous. Uh -huh.
clean yourself up. Yeah. 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 Just because God sent you to do something, it don't mean it's the season, just like that feeling. Yeah. 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 That season yeah. had to come. Just because he called me to be a prophetess, he called me to be a prophetess from the womb. Mm -hmm. He started grooming me from mm -hmm. the time I was about 12 years old. That's when I was able to grasp and understand some things. And we ain't going to get into all that because now ain't the season. Uh -huh. But I'm just saying, yeah, as yeah. God molds right. you and move you and he calls you and he sends you to do something, it don't mean he might be sending me in just to give a word, but I want to go in there and prophesy and lay hands on everybody. It ain't the season for that yet. That's right. We got to know what season and under whose authority we're operating on. Talk to me. See, it I might be it. a season, like I said, for me to speak a word, but now I'm unauthorized because now I'm trying to add on to yes, for yes. God to give Talk to me. Right. You're right. You're right. And that's yes. the problem. That's it. The yes. church is shrinking, and the Bible tells us about that too. Talk to me. That in the last days, what they gonna do? In the last days, they're gonna listen to what seductive spirits, uh -huh. idols, and devils. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on and on and on. Amen. And he said, even the elite. Yes. That's right. And we know what the elite is according to the world's term. Yeah. Even the elite yeah. will be deceived. <laughs> that was that was How many of us are walking around being deceived? Mm -hmm. He tell us about the rules of sheep clothing. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. yes. Again, who authorized you to do what you're doing? Mm -hmm. That's the question we ask ourselves. See, when we go back to the book of Moses, Moses was authorized to do everything that he did because God gave him permission. And not only did he give him permission, but it was signs and wonders yeah. that followed him as he continued to go forth. Amen. And I'm going to give you that, and then we're going to get on to the end. I told you, every time I come up here, God changes the word. He changes according to what the people need. That's right. And it's not about us. That's right. See, and that's the other thing. Thank you, Lord. See, come on. That's right. You work. Had I been disobedient uh -huh. and wanted to follow what he had given me earlier. Uh -huh. See, that's the part we miss. When he started giving us notes, yeah. we think it's for the people, but it's really Ooh, come us. Come on. Oh, yeah. 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 Talk to me. Come on. Where you gonna get up? Uh, How long are you gonna stay in that mess? My Lord. 
How long you gonna keep that unforgiveness in your heart? Mm -hmm. How long you gonna keep putting that knife through your brother and sister? Mm -hmm. How long you gonna keep backbiting? Ah. How long you gonna keep doing the stuff you're doing? Oh but you say you're called by God, and you say you're under his authority. But again, whose authority are you really under? Mm -hmm. Because I serve a holy God. Amen. I serve a righteous God. Oh, yeah. I serve a God of truth. Yes. And one thing about it, if God dwells in you, uh -huh. there's going to be some conviction. Oh, yeah. I can say stuff out my mouth, and before I even say it, the Holy Spirit says, shut up. And you know me and my attitude, I'm like, okay, Lord, that's it. They say one more thing, I'm on. And the Holy Spirit says, shut up. And then you'll see this right here happen. You see the enemy pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. Uh -huh. And the next thing you know, it's like, you, I turn around, you again. What, what, look, I'm going to need you to go ahead before we have to go. Right. But the point I'm making is, if we are submitted and fully submitted to Christ Jesus, uh -huh. and we're truly under his authority, and we're truly spending time with him, yes. and we're walking in obedience with him, stuff like that will become easier. Amen. I'm yeah. telling you, it, yeah, it becomes easier. Because then when they come at you, you just smile. And while they're sitting there going all up, mm -hmm. you begin to see the spiritual attachment that's right there. You don't see that person no more. You see what's, what that's spirit right. they operate now. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you can't see the spirit when you operate in the same spirit. Amen. Guilty. 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 And every time I stand up here talking, I'm real. If I think I'm repenting for it, I'm repenting today. Because I don't right. ever want to be found guilty, guilty yeah. of being in a position of speaking something yes, that I'm right. not living. That's right. Because every day, it's a, it's a walk. Every day. Amen. Day by day. Step by step. Yeah. It's progress. It's a process. Just like when it talks about the prunes, it goes through the pushing, the pressing, and yes. before it becomes... I mean olives, I'm sorry, those are the prone and the pressing before it reached what it's supposed to reach. It's the same thing with God. It Amen. goes through the whole process. It's the same thing with our lives. That's right. We get we answer the call. As we answer the call, then we start renewing our mind, we start getting into that book. And here's the big part. How many of us have a relationship with Christ? Yes. How do you know it's his authority if you don't have a relationship? Come on. Man. Come on. How many of us have a relationship? Yes, yes, yes. Because the key is relationship. Yes, amen. We ain't say religion. Amen. We ain't say church. Yes. We have to have that personal relationship. Yes, yes. If you don't have a personal relationship, who voice are you hearing? Yes. Whose authority are you operating on? Yes. And I'm going to give you this and then I'm going to get out the way. Amen. Look, I'm going to skip everything that was for me. <laughs> when we read about Moses in Exodus, I'm just going to uh -huh, start uh -huh. from number one to five, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I'm going to give you the scripture where it's at. Uh -huh. Moses, God revealed himself to Moses through the burning bush. Mm -hmm. That was in Exodus 3, 1 through 9. Mm -hmm. Number two, God called and commissioned Moses. That's in Exodus 3, 10. Mm -hmm. God told Moses to deliver his message in the name of Yahweh, which is I am, which is Christ Jesus. Yeah. Well, which is Jesus. I'm so, I mean, which is God. I'm sorry, because at that time, you know. Yeah. Or the Lord. And it, it's chapter 3, again, verse 13 through 15. Mm -hmm. God gave Moses authentic signs that Israel will accept. God promised he would perform miracles that will compel the Egyptians to release his people. God told Moses what the future would bring. So when God calls you, he's going to order your steps. Yes, yes. He's going to give you directions. He's going to show you how to move under his authority. Amen. He's going to show you where to move under his authority. Amen. Had Moses stepped outside of the will of God, and had Moses been in an unauthorized place, where the people have been released. And we're going to end with this. Matthew 28. Starting at verse 19. We're going to go there. And we're going to close. Oh, I'm teaching. Starting at verse 19. You there? No, we're going to start at 16. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Mm. And Jesus came to them and said, mm. All authority 
Mm. Listen to this. <laughs> this is what Jesus said. Mm. All mm. authority yeah. in heaven and on earth yeah. has been given to me. I'm uh -huh. talking about Jesus. That's right. So he's saying, I'm the authority that's been, I'm the authority, authority that has been, he, that's been given permission to and given authority and the power to do these things. And now, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, <laughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now he gave them a command. Yeah. He told them to go. Mm -hmm. Go out and make disciples. How many of us make disciples? How many of us talk to somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? Come on. But you know what your witness is? You know what your witness is? Your life. Amen. So what do people see when they see you? Do they see the renewed you? Do they see the change you? Do they see the man and woman of God? Or do they see the person? This is a big one. Oh, you know that's just how she is. Nah. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. If people are still saying, uh -huh. that's just the way you are, uh -huh. you need to check yourself. Uh, right. Because if you are a new preacher in Christ, old things have passed away, all things are made new. Yeah. Why are they still referring to you from the 20th <laughs> unsaved? Where's the change? <laughs> So God has already told us all authority and power is given. Jesus said all authority and power is given to me. Given to me. Yes. Now I'm giving it to you and I'm telling you to go out yes. and make disciples. Amen. Go out and make disciples. How many of us are still sitting because we don't want to go out? How many dead souls we got around here? Because we ain't moving. We still sit still. Oh God. How many dead souls? Oh my Lord. How long is that soul going to hurt before that wound be healed? Mm -hmm. Before you get up and go out. Oh my Lord. But you got to be equipped. You got to be in the word. Mm -hmm. And you got to know what you know before you start talking to these people. Mm -hmm. Because you can't go out unless you got yourself in the word. Lord Jesus. And Amen. just the beginning of it, he Amen. said, I'm going to start there. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son <coughs> and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching. Oh God. And teaching oh God. them to obey everything. Jesus. Did y'all hear that? Amen. I have commanded you. Did, did we miss that part? Everything? Okay. Amen. And surely I am right. with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Amen.